Paul of Francisco, uh, student uh, at ICNC, who's talking about curves in mini pots. I am very proud. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to thank the organized committee by this opportunity and to say happy birthday to Frederic. Uh, now I speak a little bit about my PhD thesis works that is about the curves in the Minkowski plane and their geometry. Let's go then. Uh, the problem. What is the problem that motivated our work? The problem is to find a theory that explains the formations of singularities of a curve in the Minkowski plane as well as the changes in its geometry. For example, here we have a figure in the Euclidean case uh, of a one parameter deformation of a cusp curve. Okay? Here we note that uh, in one side of the transition we have a, a inflection, a one inflection point and one self-intersection point. And on the other side of the transition we have three uh, inflection points and two vertices. Okay? Uh, there are some works on this problem for the Euclidean case. We, s we mentioned here the, in 1983 they did a classification of certain types of plane curves uh, which is a uh, are given by the projection of a space curve. Okay? And they did a, a classification by the A equivalence. The equivalence relation by the group A is very important for studying singularities of map geoms. But if we are interested in the geometry of curves, uh, this relation is not very appropriate since the diffeomorphism do not preserve its geometry. Okay? Then we mention here another works um, by Diaz, Nuno Belesteros, Osset Sinatari, and Wall. Uh, these works uh, uh, handle with a single curve, not a family of curve. Then this problem uh, here for the Minkowski plane in the Euclidean plane is still an open problem. But in 2017, Salari Nogabintari proposed a way to study the formations of plane curves that taken into consideration the geometry of the curve as well as their singularities. Uh, they call this method by FRS the formations of plane curves. In, in my work, we consider the same questions, but for the Minkowski plane. Let, let us see. Uh, the Minkowski plane, what is the Minkowski plane? The Minkowski plane is denoted by R12, is the plane in order with the pseudo-scalar product given by this expression. Okay? Here, uh, any non-zero vector can, uh, has three types of vectors here. The, if, if the product of this vector and itself is positive, we call it a space-like vector. If the product is zero, we call it a light-like vector. And if it's negative, a time-like. Okay, uh, what is an inflection point here? Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, here uh, we want to, to study the geometry of curves and what is the differential geometry here in the Minkowski plane? Okay, uh, if you have a smooth and regular curve in the Minkowski plane and then away from light like points, we can define a unit tangent vector given by this way. We note that in the same way in the Euclidean plane. And we define the unit normal vector, given by this way, where the sign plus happens when the curve is time-like, and the sign minus happens when the curve is space-like. This symbol here represents the orthogonal vector, which can be obtained by uh, changing the coordinates. Okay? And uh, geometrically, uh, the, the meaning of the orthogonality here in the Minkowski plane changes a little bit. Uh, for example, if we have this vector, non-zero vector, and non-light-like vector, this blue vector here, the orthogonal, he, its orthogonal vector, this red here, can be obtained by a reflection by the diagonal line. Okay? And here, for example, if we have a 
a light-like vector, for example, 1, 1, then its uh, orthogonal vector is itself. Okay? And we can define uh, a curvature function by this way. We observe that uh, we define here uh, a wave from light-like point. It is important information. And uh, now, uh, what is about the inflection points. Here we define inflection points by, by the, using the contact of the curve with lines. Okay? Uh, then the contact of a curve with lines is captured by the singularities of a high function, given by this way. And then we call the point an inflection point uh, if the curve has a contact of order greater or equal to 2 with its tangent line. Okay? Then we have some kinds of inflection points here. The first one, if the contact is exactly of order 2 and the point is not light like point, we call it an inflection, an uh, ordinary inflection point. If the point is light like, a light like ordinary inflection point. If the contact is of order k plus 1, then an inflection point of order k. If the point is not light like, if it's light like, we define a light like, we say light like inflection point of order k. Okay. Here we observe that we, we define the, uh, the inflection points without using the cur curvature function. But away from light like points, we can see that uh, the inflection points is the, the zeros of the curvature function. Okay. Now we define the vertices. Here uh, we, we don't define uh, the, the vertices by the contact with pseudo circles. Because if we are in the, at, at a light-like point, because if we are in a light-like point, the, the distance square function can be, have different types of singularities. If the center, in this case, the, the pseudo-circles is a line, and then the center can be the origin or not. If you are not the origin, the, the distance square function has some type of singularities. And if it is the origin, the singularities is more degenerate, is of more, is greater order. Okay? And then here we define uh, a vertex only for space like and time like curves as the zeros of the derivative of the curvature function. Here we also have uh, two kinds of vertex, an ordinary vertex, if this is satisfied and a vertex of order k if this is satisfied. Okay? We have an important object related to vertices, that is the evolute. Here, uh, we define the evolute away from light-like points, okay? as this curve. Okay? We observe here that the evolute depends on the curvature function, and the curvature function is not defined on the light-like points. Then, here, we don't have a definition of the evolute in the light-like points also. Okay, and, but we have a more general concept uh, that include the light-like points, that is the caustic. The caustic of a, a curve in the Minkowski plane is the bifurcation set of the family of distance square function, where the distance square function is given by this one. Okay? We observe that uh, away from light-like points, the caustic of gamma and the evolute is the same thing. Okay? Now, we will see some important examples uh, uh, of the behavior of the caustic in the special points. What special points? First one is an ordinary vertex, uh, a vertex of order 2, and an ordinary inflection point. Okay? Let's go there. First one for uh, the, uh, the behavior of the evolute in an ordinary vertex is given by this figure. Okay. Then we have two types of, uh, of configuration of the evolute. Okay. How can I identify how of, uh, what of these uh, is, uh, happen? Uh, we analyze the sign of the product of the curve, of the curvature function, and the second derivative of the curvature function at the, vert at the vertex. Okay. If the sign is positive, the behavior is like this. If the sign is negative, the behavior is like this. We observe that this in, here, in this presentation, all, uh, all evolute 
and uh, caustics are drawn in a head curve. And the curve is uh, the blue color. Okay? And the vertex uh, are described here uh, by a small square, the inflection point a small ball, and light like points a small star. Okay? Then, naturally, here we have two, two kinds of in ordinary vertex. And then we can define. Uh, we call an ordinary vertex an inward vertex or an outward vertex. An inward vertex happens when the, the evolute has this configuration. And the outward vertex happens when this, the, the evolute has this configuration. Okay. Now, for a vertex of order 2, uh, we can see that the evolute, given this picture here, center, uh, the evolute has a singularity A equivalent to T3, T4. And then, in, one, in a generic one-parameter family of curves, the evolute undergoes the swallow tail transition. That means that in one side we have two ordinary vertex. One is inward and the other is outward. And on the other side we don't have any vertex. Okay? Now, for an ordinary inflection point, we can see the, that the behavior of the evolute is given by this figure. The evolute goes to infinity, asymptotically along the normal line. The two components of the evolute live in the two quadrants which not contain the curve. And uh, the evolute can be modeled by xy equal to 1 in some coordinate system. Okay. Uh, in the, the work of Soleno Gabintari, they called the method by FRS deformations of plane curves. Here we call by FRLS deformations of plane curves. F for flat, R for round, uh, L for light like, and S for singular. Okay? Let us see what concerns this, this method. Okay? Then here we, cons we have this, the following situation. Consider two gems of M parameter deformations, gamma S and alpha R, and we consider also the parameter space of gamma S endowed with a stratification, such that in each stratum all the curves uh, have these three properties. They are diffeomorphic, the they have the same number of inflection points, vertices, light like points, and singularities, and they have the same relative position of their inflection points, various light-like points, singulars, and self-intersection points. And we consider also the parameter space of alpha r endowed with another stratification with the same properties. Okay? Then we, called, uh, we, we say that these two deformations are FRLS equivalents if there exists a gem of homeomorphism between the parameter space of gamma s to the parameter space of alpha r, such that uh, for each s, the curves gamma s and alpha h s has these three properties. Okay? Basically, the FRS, FRLS equivalence means that the, the instantaneous configuration of these two curves, gamma s and alpha h of s, uh, is the same, including their inflection points, vertices, light-like points, singularities, uh, self-intersection points, and also their caustics. Okay. Uh, in in this work, uh, we study the FRLS deformations of local phenomena with co-dimension less or equal to two. Okay. But here we present only for regular curves, and we describe in details this for situation, okay? The FRL deformations of plane curves at special points and at an inflection point of order 2, of order 3, and light-like ordinary inflection point and light-like inflection point of order 2. And in each case, we want to define the concept of FRLS generic deformation. The idea is to show that uh, any two uh, FRL as defer, uh, generic deformations are FRLS equivalent. Okay. Uh, let us see. Uh, okay. Now, for the case of regular curves, uh, 
Uh, we know from the classical uh, singularity theory that if you want to study the formations of plane curves at a vertex of a finite order, then it's enough to study the uh, family of distance square function. It, if it is an R plus versal deformation, then we have a well understood model. And in the same way, if we want to study uh, the formation of plane curves at an uh, inflection point of finite order, it, uh, we study the family of height function. If it is an R versal deformation, we get a model. Okay? But here, we want to, to study the deformation of plane curves at uh, inflection points of finite order but taking into account vertex and line-like points that can appear, okay? We, we observe also that uh, the, the distance square function measure the contact with circles, okay? But at an inflection point, the center of the circle with more contact with the curve goes to infinity. Okay, and then the, not, the next result uh, shows a way to study uh, inflection points and vertex uh, without using the distance square function. Okay. Here. Then we have a m parameter family of regular curve with no light like points. And, then, uh, and suppose that this family has a, a curve such that uh, that has uh, a light, uh, inflection point of order greater or equal to 2. And then we have two, two information here. The first one, uh, the family of high function is an R plus versal deformation, if and only if the family of curvature function is an R versal deformation. And uh, if the family of curvature function is an R versal deformation, then the derivative of the curvature function is an R versal deformation also. Deformation also. Then here we can see that the, the zeros of the curvature function give us the inflection points and the zeros of the derivatives of the curvature function give us the, the vertices. Okay? And then this condition for the family of high function being F, uh, R plus versus the formation is a good condition because from that we can study the inflections and vertex simultaneously. Okay? Now, then, we say that a deformation of a regular curve with no light-like points is FR genetic at an inflection point of finite order if the family of high function is an R plus versal deformation. Okay. Now, we will see uh, the FR genetic deformations uh, at the special points, uh, inflection points of order 2 and inflection points of order 3. Let's go. First, for the inflection point of order 2, uh, we have, uh, firstly, the behavior of the evolute are, go, uh, are given this central figure. Okay? The evolute goes to infinity asymptotically along the normal line. The two components of the evolute live in the two quadrants which do not contain the curve. And the evolute can be modal. Oh, sorry by x square y equal to 1 in some coordinate system. Okay. Uh, secondly, if we consider a FR generic one parameter family of curve which contain the original curve, then the bifurcations on the evolute are given by this figure. That means in one side of the transition we have two ordinary inflection points and one outward vertex. In and on the other side of the transition, we don't have an inflection point, but we have an inward vertex. Okay. And thirdly, uh, if uh, any FR generic one parameter family of curves at an inflection point of order 2 is FR equivalent to this model. Okay. How can I show this? The idea of the proof is the following. The first item, in the behavior of the, the evolute can be obtained uh, observing that locally at uh, vet, an inflection point of order 2, we can write the curve in this form, where A0 is different from 0. And from that, we can get uh, by, a, by a... And then conclude the first item. To the second item, we observe that as gamma S is an FR genetic deformation, then we can write then it in this form. Okay? 
And from that, furthermore, we know that the curvature functions of this, uh, of, uh, the family of curvature functions is an R plus, an R versal deformation of an A1 singlet. And then we can get uh, the zero and the singular sets of this, this family and conclude about the bifurcations on the evolute. To prove the third item, uh, it's enough to see that the calculations in the second item depend only on the fact that the curve has an inflection point of order 2 and on the deformations being FR generic. Okay. Now, in the same way, for the inflection point of order 3, we have, first one, firstly, the, the behavior of the evolute are given by this figure 1 here. The evolute goes, as, goes to infinity asymptotically along the normal line. The two components live in the two quadrants which do not contain the curve and can be modeled by x cubed y equal to 1 in some coordinate system. Okay. Secondly, if we have a FR generic two parameter family of curves which contain the original curve, then the bifurcations on the evolutes are given by this figure. Okay. We observe here that the bifurcations diagram is composed by a cusp curve corresponding to inflection points of order 2 and a regular curve corresponding to vertex of order 2. And thirdly, uh, any FR generic two parameter family of curves at an inflection point of order 3 is FR equivalent to this model. The proof of this is in the same way to the previous case. Uh, now, we, we have seen the FRL deformations for uh, outside, the, away from light-like points. And now, what happens for light-like points, okay? Uh, here, in this work of Saloon and Tari, they showed that all smooth, regular, and closed curve has at least four light-like points. And then light-like points can appear also, uh, always, okay? Here in this figure, uh, we have an original curve with one light like point, and uh, we can deformate it, and uh, here the, the light like point uh, goes out, and here we have a birth of another light like point. And here we can see uh, that a light like point uh, is a point so that the, the tangent line is parallel to the diagonal line. Okay, then it's natural to expect uh, the formation that, uh, that that preserves these lines. Okay, let let us see. Uh, here we can we take the the curve and the the formations in this form with f of zero and the first derivative of f and zero is equal to zero. But we we want to see this figure and this this. <laughs> this curve and this deformation by a zero level of curves of a function. Then we consider a function g such so that uh, the zero level uh, is locally the curve. And consider also a deformation big G such so that for each s the zero level is locally the, cu the curve gamma s. Okay? Then we naturally consider the subgroup denoted by k star of the contact group k, where the chains of coordinates in the source preserve the diagonal lines. Okay? And then we can say that uh, the formation gamma s is a k star versal deformation of the curve gamma if this deformation big G is a k star e versal deformations of the small g. Okay? Then we say that uh, uh, the formation gamma s of a regular curve at a light-like inflection point of finite order is FRL generic if uh, gamma s is k star versus the formation. Okay? Uh, in the previous case, uh, away from a light-like point, uh, we can see naturally oh, why the, the condition to be FR generic is a good condition. But here is not very clear uh, how this condition can, uh, can be a good condition. For this, for to see this, we go to the jet space. 
Okay, for this, we consider Vn, the set of uh, polynomials in one variable of degree at most n and without constant terms. And then uh, we know that uh, any smooth curve can be written in each point as a graph of function and then we can define the monge taylor map by this function. Okay? If we have a family of curves, then we, we have a family of monge taylor maps. And we show, we proved that at a light-like inflection point of finite order, the condition for gamma s being FRL genetic is the same condition for the family of Monge Taylor maps being transversal to the stratum of light-like inflection points and to the stratum of vertex that can appear. Okay? Then it's a good condition. Okay? Uh, now we will see in details uh, the FRL deformations at special points. The first one is a light-like ordinary inflection point and the second a light-like inflection point of order 2. Then uh, at a light-like ordinary inflection point we'll we have firstly the behavior of the caustic are given by this central figure. The caustic is composed by a diagonal line and a regular curve. Uh, secondly, uh, if we have a FR gen FRL, genetic one parameter family of curves, which contains the original curve, then the bifurcations on the caustic are given in this figure. Okay? That means in one side of the transition we have two light-like points and one ordinary inflection point. And the other side of the transition we have two outward vertex and one light like one inflection ordinary inflection point okay and thirdly uh, any frl genetic one parameter family of curves at a light like ordinary inflection point is frl equivalent to this model how can i show this okay the idea of the proof the first it in the behavior of the caustic is the same idea it is enough to see that at a light-like ordinary inflection point, the curve is, is, can, can be written in this form. And from this, we can get the expression of the caustic and conclude about this, uh, the behavior. Okay. To the second item, we note that the family of distance square function here is an R plus versal deformation of an A3 singularity. We observe that here we uh, are in the case where the center of the pseudo circles is the origin. Because if it is not, the, the, the caustic is only a regular curve. Okay. And then uh, from this, we can see that the big bifurcation set is locally diffeomorphic to the cuspidal edge. Okay. Why the, the big bifurcation set is very important? Because if we take this projection, given this way, uh, for each S, the fiber of this projection gives us the caustic of the curve gamma S. Then uh, we can use the, cl the classification of a stable function made in 1976 by Arnold through diffeomorphisms in the source preserving the cuspidal edge we get that the fibers of P could have three models. Regular, that means all the fibers is a cusp curve, uh, or can be a lips or big transition. However, we study the contact of the big bifurcation set with the, oh, the zero fiber, and we get that the, the transition is a big transition as we describe in the figure below, the figure, the previous figure here. Now, for the case of uh, light-like inflection points of order 2, we have firstly the behavior of the caustic given in this figure 1 here. Okay? The caustic is uh, composed by uh, the diagonal line counted twice and a regular curve. Okay? Secondly, if we have a FRL genetic two-parameter family of curves which contains the original curve, then the bifurcations on the caustic are given by this figure. Okay? We observe that the, the bifurcations diagram consists of two cusps and one regular curve. Okay? This cusp here corresponded to vertex of order 2 
uh, here uh, corres corresponded to uh, light-like ordinary inflection points and the regular curve corresponded to uh, vertex of uh, to inflection points of order 2. Okay. And thirdly, uh, any FRL generic two parameter families of curves at a light like inflection point of order 2 is FRL equivalent to this model. Mm. How can I prove this? Okay. The idea of the proof, the first item, is exactly the same idea of the previous one. Uh, to the second item, we observe that here we cannot use the classification of stable maps from R4 to R2 made in 90, 1985 by Bruce and Ghibli, because here the projection is not stable. And then how can I proceed? Okay. We proceed as follows. First, we can analyze the deformations with respect to inflections and light-like points. Uh, writing the, 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 the deformations in this form and observing that the, zero, the zeros of this family give us the light-like points and the singular points of this, this family give us the inflection points. And then we can verify that this family is R and R plus versus deformation and then obtain the model for, the, for its uh, zero and singular sets. Okay, now uh, for, and then we can obtain the bifurcations with respect to light like and inflection points. For the vertex, we use three things. We use the formations already studied, the description of the stratum of order two, and the analysis of the number of vertex in each stratum. And then we can conclude the, that the bifurcations on the, the cost are given by this figure. Okay. Here we have some papers that we used, and uh, muchas gracias. Happy birthday, Frederick. In fact, we, we classify for the regular curve. The, for the singular curve is the, the next step. And we classify all the phenomena with co-dimension less or equal to two. Yes. We, we analyze. And you, you are planning to, to study also cusps? Yes, yes. Cusp, uh, Humphreys cusp, and the singularity in the case of non-light-like non points and the light-like points and see what happened with the caustic and the, the bifurcations. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, so let's...